In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you how I created a fine art nude image inspired by Mother Earth with a statuesque twist. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. I love shooting fine art nudes because there are no rules. There are no expectations. I get to create art for the sake of art. No bosses, no deadlines, it's just making beautiful photographs. And so that's one of the reasons I love creating for my fine art nude workshops. Every year I run these workshops and in them I create a variety of different concepts. We play around with everything from super saturated gels to water to images inspired by mother nature, which is what I want to break down for you today. In this photograph, my concept is I wanted something that played with a lot of texture. Texture on leaves, texture on the background, texture on my subject. And I want it to be very earthy, very nature-like. And so that's where I began with the concept. And so as I built this out in my mind, I wanted the subject to, to have the texture on the skin. And so what we decided to do is pick up bentonite clay. So this is basically natural clay mask. It's good for the skin, often used on the face, but we covered the subject's body in it. Now, by the way, if you try this yourself, it takes quite a while to dry. So if you want this kind of cracked earth clay look, you should give yourself an hour, an hour and a half for application and drying. And so that's what we did for this shot. Then, thinking about this texture on the skin, I wanted to have that texture mimicked in the background. And so for that reason, I selected a Gravity Backdrops uh, beige background with a medium texture. I didn't want it to be too grungy of a texture. I wanted it to be enough so that it looked like the texture in the background was mimicking the texture in the foreground. And then I wanted my subject to be able to pose with a prop. And so I went to here in New York, to the Floral District, I went to a place called Caribbean Cuts, and I picked up some of these old looking leaves. I picked up a variety of them. Uh, this is how they looked. I didn't age them. I didn't paint them. I didn't put clay on them. Although that is something that you could consider if you were doing a variation of this set. And so what that left me with was a background with texture, a subject with texture, props with texture. And so I have all of the beautiful things in front of my lens. But then I needed to decide what to do with lighting and post-processing, which is what I'd like to show you now. So let's take a look at our lighting. All right, so in this behind the scenes, uh, you can see that I'm using two lights. I have this large umbrella with diffusion as my main light source over here. Uh, what that basically means is a soft light, some sort of soft light. You could use a five foot octobox, a large umbrella with diffusion, a three or four foot, uh, three by four foot or four by six foot soft box. Now I was shooting over centered, basically where you see this other light, towards the subject there. So what that means is the soft light source was off to the right hand side of the frame. The reason that I did that is I wanted to emphasize texture. If you go with completely flat light, you don't see texture quite as much, but by bringing the light off to the right hand side, it would rake across the texture of the leaves and the subject in the background, giving me a little bit of shadow. I could then emphasize that with contrast or clarity and pull out that texture, like really emphasize it but I didn't want the shot to be dark. I wanted it to be light overall, kind of those, like those creamy beige tones, and I didn't want dark shadows, which is why you have our second light. The second light I have here is a strobe, no modifier at all, bounced into a white V-flat. Now, if you have a white wall there, you could just bounce it into a white wall. Basically, the idea is that this light source, this bare bulb, bounces into the wall or the V-flat, and when it does so, it spreads out, and it creates just a wall of soft light because the rule is the larger the light source is relative to the size of the subject, the softer the light. So when we bounce light into the wall, it's making it a big light source. The wall becomes the light source and then that light moves towards the subject. And so as I'm doing this, the idea is just really soft, subtle light filling in flat onto the subject. So the main light carves out with soft light, the fill light makes sure those shadows aren't too dark. So it's relatively simple lighting. And again, I mentioned it's a gravity backdrop with a medium texture on beige. Now let's talk about our camera settings. For this, I was shooting with the Canon R5, which is my go-to mirrorless camera. I use it for basically every shoot that I ever do. And I was shooting with the RF 24 to 72.8. I chose this lens in this situation because of how sharp it is. I also wanted a little bit of flexibility of the zoom if I wanted to do a figure study closer up, maybe just on the subject's chest, or I wanted to go full length and get the subject head to toe, the 24 to 70 would give me that flexibility. You'll notice that I'm shooting at f2.8. 
I thought it might be nice to put the background just a little bit out of focus, bring the attention back to the subject, but still see some texture in the background because that's the idea, I want texture upon texture. So now let's pop over and take a look at these images, what I captured in camera versus where I ended up at the end of post-processing. All right, so this was the end shot, but let me show you where we began. This is a pretty drastic transformation. You can see that there is a light to the right-hand side. You can see there's you know, sculpting shadows on the left-hand side, but it's pretty flat and I wasn't seeing as much of the texture as I wanted to. I also think that everything is looking a little orange. Maybe the leaves are looking a little green and that's not what I wanted. I wanted the image to be almost monochromatic, really to just be one color throughout everything. And so I achieved a great deal of this in Capture One, in my raw processing. I, didn't, I did some things in Photoshop for sure, but I was able to move in the right direction with how I processed the raw. So this was straight out of camera, and then this was my raw processing, and what I did is I majorly desaturated the image. I went into the oranges, specifically targeted the oranges, desaturated those, grabbed anything in the green yellow, desaturated that. So you can see how this is nearly monochromatic, not black and white, but all that one beige tone. I also put the clarity to almost 100%. I dramatically emphasized clarity so I could see some of that texture in the midtones, and I also increased the contrast. You can see here it looks rather flat, and now I'm seeing a lot more of the texture throughout. Then I brought it over into Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I did a couple of major things. So first of all, some of the things I didn't like, I didn't like seeing the stem sticking out underneath her elbow or out of the hand there. I wanted to clean that up, make it um, just a little bit more of a clean composition overall. Uh, I also wanted to contour. I thought that the light was a little too flat. Now contouring is when you paint with highlight and shadow. You can do this with makeup, with highlights on the top of the cheeks, shadows underneath, but you can also do it with the body. This is how I make something look more round, full, have more dimension. And so I did that for this image. So this is what I captured in RAW, and then this is what we achieved in Photoshop. So what I did is you can see on the edges of the body I painted with shadow. See how the edges become darker and more dramatic? Certain areas of the body I painted with highlights, so down the center of the arms, around the rib cage. Uh, I painted shadow uh, around the breast a little bit more, so you can see that it created a lot more definition. I also painted shadow around the jawline. And then lastly, you'll see that there was, see that there was even more uh, contrast. So what I did is I added even more contrast, even more clarity, and then I shifted the colors around until I found something that I felt was really, really earthy. It wasn't any particular uh, strategy that I was going for. I was just looking for something that, that felt right in this instant. Minimal color, but natural in tone. So this is where we started, and this is where we ended up. I did this for several images. Uh, I did shoot some that were actually nude, where you saw more of the form, but I also liked the quietness of playing around with an implied nude. Here's another example, a wider shot of that same composition, which is why I like the 24 to 70. Uh, this one was closer to 70, and then this one was a wider, more of a, a 50 or a 40. All right, so just to show you, here's where we started with this image. I pulled out a lot of the oranges and yellows, I really increased the clarity, that was done all in, in uh, raw processing, and then this is what I achieved in Photoshop where I emphasized texture even more and pulled out even more color, but you'll notice how much I played around with contouring. Shadows on the edges, highlights, I basically find the highlights that were already there, retrace them, the shadows that were already there, retrace them, and it gives a lot more depth and dimension to these images. I hope you've enjoyed the behind the scenes and the making of these shots. Now, fine art nudes, what I love about them is really there's no limit, and you can see there's such a variety of approach you can take. So if you would like to join me for one of my fine art nude workshops, be sure to visit learnwithlindsay.com and check the link in the description below so you can see the upcoming workshops I have for this next year. I post them sometimes nearly a year in advance, and so they do sell out quickly, but I do give you plenty of time to plan. Now, if you've enjoyed this photo deconstruction, I recommend that you like and subscribe because I have a lot more of these videos coming your way. See you next time.